Hi guys, it's Amber, and welcome back to my channel, Amber Eats Books. In this video, I'm going to do a combined wrap up of April and May. Um, I read five books in April and seven books in May, so really it shouldn't take me too long to film this, hopefully. But like I said in my last wrap up video, I can't remember what I did yesterday, so I definitely need to read my reviews out of my notebook here because it's been quite some time since I've read these books and I need them to refresh my memory. Anyway, let's jump in. So to kick this off, I started April with one of my favorite books and that is The Girl in the Tower, which is the second book in the Winter Night Trilogy by Katherine Arden. I gave this book five stars, just like I gave the first book, A Bear and a Nightingale, five stars. I loved it. This continued on um, with the story of Asia, and we followed her in a different place, but it still was very reminiscent of the first book. They connected, but they were different stories. Um, my review actually says, this book was just as good as the first one. I love the blend of old and new characters. It felt familiar, but was also a story in its own right. I did feel this one started a little slow, but by the end, I was breathless. I have pre-ordered book three and I'm counting down the days until it comes. I'm so excited. I need that third book right now. <laughs> I hope you guys, if you have not checked out the series, will do so because it is fantastic. The next book I finished in April, I didn't start in April, but finished in April was um, A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. I wanted to like this book because the movie was coming out soon when we had started reading it and I really wanted to see the movie. Since I've read this book, I now think I have no desire to even see the movie. I had originally given, given this book three stars, but have since dropped it down to two. This is the story of Meg and her brother Charles and her friend Calvin, and they are going on a quest um, pretty much through space and time to find her father. We meet a cast of characters along the way, and the premise is really um, unique. However, the writing of it and, and the execution of it didn't work for me. I'll read you what I wrote in my review. I had to read this book extremely slowly with my youngest daughter. I think by drawing it out so much, it began to get tedious. I still appreciate the message of the, the story, but felt that it lacked a bit in the execution. Some characters were very whiny. Also, the repetitiveness in the dialogue drove me crazy. I did enjoy the creativity that went into this book. The premise was unique, especially at the time it was written. I'm glad I read it since it's a classic of children's literature. Now I know what everyone is talking about. However, the flaws were too great for me to want to continue with the series. That sums it up. I don't really recommend it. Read it if you want to, but just know that it was not one of my favorites. The next book I read in April was Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Now this book has been all over booktube, so I won't go into the synopsis here. If you wanna know, just look it up on Goodreads. Um, but it was fantastic. I gave this book four stars. I did write a warning for my review and that says, this book isn't for readers who are sensitive to sexual assault or overtly gory violence. There's definitely a lot of that in this book. So know that going in, if that's not for you, then definitely don't pick it up. Um, but my review says, I debated giving this book a higher rating, but there were just a few places where the pace seemed to really slow down, which is true. If the pacing had been a bit more consistent, it could have easily been a five-star read. That being said, this is one of the best thrillers I've read. It was filled with twists and turns I didn't always see coming. Once I really got into the story, I didn't want to put it down. I had to take a few breaks while reading. This was so hard to do. I just needed to know what was going to happen to these characters. This was my first book by Slaughter, but it definitely won't be my last. Like I said, it was a little tiny bit slow in parts. It did kind of like speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down, um, which is the only reason why it wasn't a five star. But for me and thrillers, sometimes um, I have a hard time reading them. I I need books that surprise me. I need books that keep my interest. I don't want to be able to predict the entire story from the first page or two. Um, and her book I definitely could not do that. So I loved it and I highly recommend it. The next book I read in April was Glory Over Everything, Beyond the Kitchen House by Kathleen Grissom. I read the first book, which was the companion novel, um, The Kitchen House, uh, back at the end of last year, I wanna say, and it was so good. It was one of those books that I will remember forever and it just really uh, made me think a lot and I, I loved the writing in it. This book almost felt like it was written by somebody else. Like they took her idea and kept writing and I just did not connect with this book. I ended up reading it 
2.75 stars, which is not a high rating for me. My review says, I wanted to love this companion novel as much as The Kitchen House, but I couldn't. I felt like these characters were held at an emotional distance. The pacing was also not as well done as the first book. The real plot of the story wasn't even a factor until well over 100 pages into the book. I still think the important themes were dealt with well, though I wouldn't hesitate to read another book by this author. This one just missed the mark for me, which is so true because if I had to go off just The Kitchen House, I would read everything this author ever put out. But then she put out this book and it just didn't live up to the greatness of The Kitchen House for me. And I was really saddened by that. But I don't want to give up on the author because that first book really just sucked me in and, and, and blew my mind. So I definitely want to continue on with her, though this one is just one that I don't recommend. The last book I read in April was an audiobook that I actually listened to, and that was in Every Morning The Way Home Gets Longer and Longer by Frederick Bachman. And this was narrated by David Morse. This is a short novella about a grandfather who has Alzheimer's and his grandson and how his grandson is viewing his grandfather and how his grandfather is viewing, um, dealing with Alzheimer's. It, it was just a really emotional story for me. And this is why I'll read my review. This novella had such an emotional impact on me. I tend to have some fears about growing older and losing my memory. This book was a way to explore that scenario while also being able to express my emotions without actually having to go through it. Bachman packed quite a punch in such a short story. He is definitely one of my favorite authors. This was the fourth um, work that I read by him and I, I just get blown away each and every time. So I definitely recommend it. It was very quick to listen to. I think it was only about an hour long um, on double speed on audiobook. So if you have some time, I would definitely uh, give it a go. Now we move into my May wrap up. I read seven books in the month of May and the first one that I read was The Breakdown by B.A. Paris. This was a library book and I only rated it two stars. This is the story of a woman who is driving home one night and it is pouring rain. She sees someone um, on like an like a road that's not traveled very much. She sees a car pulled over and it's a woman in the car and she pulls to, like in front of the car and is waiting to see if the woman gets out or shows any signs that she needs help. And when she doesn't see anything, she just kind of continues on her way. She goes to sleep and when she wakes up the next morning, she finds out that that woman has been murdered. The premise sounds really good. However, I'll read you my review and we'll see how I felt. This was one of those books where I called the ending only a few pages in. I wasn't particularly enjoying the story, but kept pushing through just to see if I was right. Overall, I didn't find this book very thrilling, which is what I look for in a thriller. And it's so true. I've read two books now by B.A. Paris, and I was not impressed with either one of them. Normally, I would call it quits, but there's just something about, I don't know whether it's the cover of her books or me just wanting to really enjoy them because everyone else does, but I may try the new book that she has coming out, which I think is called Bring Me Back or something like that. And if I see it at my library, I'll pick it up. If not, I'm not going to go out of my way to find it. But this one, I don't recommend. Now the next book I read in May is one that I can't even believe that I read. I, well, I didn't even finish it, but it was a very large book. I think it was about seven or 800 pages or something like that. And I read maybe 250, almost 300 pages of this book and kind of like skimmed through the rest of it. Um, I read reviews after I decided to stop reading it and kind of filled in the blank about what happened in the rest of the book. I gave this book only one star and that book was Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. Now, this was a book that I've heard nothing but praise about. It is the story of a woman who sort of travels back in time and it starts to live a life in that time because she can't get back to her present time. I knew it was historical. I knew there might have been a little bit of romance in it, but I did not know that there was going to be so much that I just could not stand about it. Let's read what I thought. <laughs> no. Just no, I can't bring myself to finish reading this book. There are just too many things that I can't deal with. I'm really shocked by the number of high ratings it has received, which is exactly how I felt. There is abuse in this book. There's rape. There is um, this woman who this woman who meets this man and starts this relationship and marries him and stuff in this old time period. I think I got to the point in the book where I was sort of invested in it. I was like, okay, I can see where this is going. And then um, these two characters get married. They're doing it like jackrabbits through this whole story. I, I don't know anyone that has had sex so much in, 
in their life that these two characters did in just a short period of time while I was reading this book. And then the man beats the woman because she did something to embarrass him basically, beats her, like heavily beats her. She's mad at him for like a day and then ends up forgiving him because it was for her own good. I was like, what? I just had to stop reading the book. I, I couldn't deal with that. And, and then I went and I read reviews and I went into deeper um, things in the plot and what they were saying and other things that happened. And I was like, how is this series as popular as it is? I don't get it. And it's been turned into a television show and people love it. My opinion, but I just couldn't stand this book. No, just no. I definitely will not be continuing on in this series. The next book I read in May was Caraval by Stephanie Garber. This was a book that I was so excited to read because there had been so many conflicting thoughts here on booktube. Some people really loved it and some people just were really disappointed by it because they were expecting so much more out of it. I went into it with kind of lower expectations, which I do with most of young adult books because some really work for me and a lot really don't. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised. I really ended up enjoying it. I gave it three and a half stars. It's the story of these two sisters who go to Caraval, which is a competition. And um, there's just a, a large cast of characters and you're following this competition, which I'm kind of a sucker for competitions and training books and school training books and things like that. So I really ended up enjoying it. And my review says, this was a light entertaining read. It was exactly what I needed to get me through a stressful week. I will happily check out the sequel. And um, I know the sequel is out now, I believe, and I'm going to be requesting it from my library very soon. The next book I read in May was Night Shadow by Sebastian DeCastell. This is book two in the Great Coat series. I did a buddy read of this with my friend Dee from Books and Quirks. I'll leave her channel down below. This was so much fun to read with Dee. We ended up, you know, reading about 50 pages a day. So it took us about two weeks because this is quite a big book and we had other things going on, other books we were reading. Um, but it was so much fun to kind of slow it down and to read it that way with her. We were able to pull so much out of it and I just loved every moment of it. I did write a review. Um, I gave it four stars and it said, I love these characters. I had many laugh out loud moments during their witty banter. They are really what drive the series for me. I will say, I don't think the overall storyline of the series was moved along quite as much as I had hoped. That being said, I was still thoroughly engaged by the many action scenes and the imminent danger that these characters found themselves facing. I can't wait to see what will happen in the next installment. We're supposed to buddy read book three next month and I cannot wait because it was so much fun. Hope you guys check this out if you're into fantasy. The next book I listened to in May was The Little Book of Hugga, The Danish Way to Living Well by Meek Wicken, Wiking. I'm not sure if I said that correctly, but um, I listened to this as an audiobook. I only gave it two stars and I didn't even finish it. Um, my review says, I made it about 40% of the way through and was not enjoying it. While there were a few tidbits that were interesting, on the whole, I found it boring. This may be because I was listening to the audiobook. It may be better suited for me as a print copy. I don't know. The way that it was being read, it was just kind of a little choppy for me. And I just, I, I didn't get it. So maybe I will try to check out the physical copy from my library soon to see if I get along with that better. It's one of those books that I just want to read just to kind of know what everyone else had been talking about. Um, and I, I did find few a few of the parts interesting. So I would like to just see if maybe it was the formatting and just listening to it that didn't do it for me. Another book that I read in the month of May was The Beginner's Goodbye by Ann Tyler. I actually listened to the audiobook of this as well. I loved back when we were grownups. That was one of the first Ann Tyler books I've ever read. I don't know if I've read any others besides these two, um, but back when we were grownups is one that has stuck with me for the last three years actually. I really enjoyed it. So I was hoping to really enjoy this one. And while I I enjoyed it somewhat, um, it wasn't one of those books that will stick with me at all. I gave it three stars and my review says, this was mildly entertaining but contained nothing that blew me away. That's exactly how I felt. And the last book that I read for May was The Dragon Keeper by Robin Hobb. This is book one of the Reign Wild Chronicles, which is a quartet, I believe. Now this is the fourth set of books in the Realm of the Elderling series. So you have to be quite a Hob fan to understand even what I am saying. So this is for all you Hob fans out there. I don't know if you guys know, but I read the 
first three trilogies somewhat out of order. I started actually with the Live Ship Traders trilogy. I was a newbie to not only BookTube, but to Robin Hobb, and I got it wrong, and I didn't know that that was the second trilogy. I found out after I had read the first book in that trilogy. So I just decided to continue on with that trilogy, and then I would go back and read the Farseer books, which I did. So I read the Farseer trilogy and the Tawny Man trilogy back to back, and those all um, revolve around a character named Fitz and there's a whole supporting cast of characters in those books and I became so attached to Fitz that I was afraid to jump into the Rainwild Chronicles because I knew he wasn't going to be in these books that these follow a different set of characters in a different part of the world around the same time frame though um, so I was afraid to jump in but I don't know why I was because it was so good I can't really give you guys a synopsis of this book because it does spoil things in the other books that came before it but I will read you my review and it says this was quite a departure coming off the heels of the last book in the Tawny Man trilogy the pace was much slower but still kept my attention I thoroughly enjoyed meeting all of the new characters that were introduced Rob is a master at giving us a wide range cast I was never bored as we jumped from person to person to dragon within the story I love how she's giving us a greater understanding of the rain wilds though I'm sure there's still a lot we don't know we were left with a cliffhanger of sorts so I'm eager to get my hands on the next install I've already requested it from my libraries and I am so excited for it to come in I think it's gonna come in this week and I just want to read it so badly um, but I'm starting to get further on in in her books now and I know there's only a certain number of books left in this whole realm of the elderling series so part of me wants to like binge them but part of me wants to spread them out a little bit because I want to savor them so much because they are some of my favorite books now but if if you are a avid fantasy reader I would definitely recommend picking up these books I just love them so much and then most people that read them here on booktube love them too anyway that wraps up what I read for the months of April and May what did you guys read did you read any of these books how did you feel about them as always let me know down in those comments below I hope you're having a great week and happy reading